Hello YouTube. So have you ever wondered what a new board company might be like, but you don't want to waste your own money trying it out? Well, you can watch my reviews and find out my honest opinions on what these boards are like. So I spend all my own money on boards, and if you look at the amount of subscribers I have and the amount of views I have, I think it's pretty obvious that I am doing this for myself and I'm not getting paid by anybody to do it. In fact, it costs me quite a lot of money. So in this review, I'm going to be checking out Killing Floor, which is a new board company I've never tried. So keep watching, there's some skate clips and my opinions and little experiments as I test out this board to let you know what it's going to be like so we can take a little bit of the guesswork out of buying a new board. I'm here at Thompson Skate Park to try and get a session in early Saturday morning before it starts raining. A lot of big dark clouds and a foreboding wind. And I've ridden this killing floor board a couple of times. And I want to compare it to the Shane O'Neill board that I was just riding. So the killing floor board is a 32. So it's a quarter inch longer than the Shane O'Neill. The Shane O'Neill was a 31 and three quarters. Um, this is a eight and one eighth, which is one sixteenth of an inch smaller than the Shane O'Neill board was. And the wheelbase is a quarter inch longer. So the distance from bolts to bolts is a quarter inch longer on the killing floorboard. The other thing I've noticed is this board is almost symmetrical, meaning the nose and tail are almost exactly the same size. When I measure, when I measure from the bolt to the end of the nose on the tail, I have six and three quarters. When I measure from the bolts to the nose, I have seven inches. So that's almost symmetrical. I'm going to check out the Shane O'Neill board. On this one, when I measure from the bolts to the nose, I have seven and an eighth. The tail is six and three eighths. So that's a half inch difference. The nose is half an inch longer than the tail on the Shane O'Neill. And on this one, it's a quarter inch. And I'm actually much more comfortable with a larger nose than tail. So this board actually feels a little bit weird. Um, it, like the nose often feels like a tail to me because it's just not, if they took an eighth off this tail and put it onto the nose, I would have the perfect, I was about to say perfect balance, but what I actually mean is the perfect imbalance that I've become accustomed to riding. So, the strange thing is though, sometimes even though you don't feel 100% comfortable on a slightly different style board, you can still do all your tricks just right. And I've been, had a couple sessions on this and this board's feeling good. The shape of this board is a little different than the Primitive, which was a very blunt popsicle stick shape. This one has a slightly more pointy nose and a fairly tapered tail, which I actually really like. So if they just took that eighth off and put it on there, I think this board would be perfect for me. It's got really nice pop, um, not as stiff as the Primitive, slightly more springy, more flexy. The dish on this board, the concave, is slightly flatter, especially around the bolts. It flattens out a bit and the nose feels a bit flat, um, but still steep enough. I'm riding this board on Thunders. It works pretty well, but the balance point for manuals is kind of pinched in one spot. I, I, if I'm too far this way, I just go over. If I'm too far this way, I just go that way. So it sort of only sits in one spot. And I think if I was riding this deck on Indies, it would have a better balance point. Because if I rode Indies, it would actually bring the wheels in about a quarter inch. Independence versus Thunders have a different wheelbase. Indies is narrower and Thunders is wider. So because of the extra quarter inch on this board, in terms of wheelbase and length, 
I think it would work out really nicely on indies, although I'm really not struggling with it on thunders. It makes it have a really steep and responsive feel. Although this isn't exactly the shape I'm used to, it still works really well for a lot of tricks. So I'm going to try a few of the flat ground tricks that I like on this board. In spite of that, I actually kind of like every flip trick on this board. But that one tells me it's time to go home. Ow! So today I decided to switch my trucks to indies on this killing floor board. And I'm pleasantly surprised with how much better it is. Definitely this model killing floor board is better suited to indies. And certain things like my 360 flips have gotten better, more consistent, and my manuals have gotten more consistent. Like I was saying, the pivot point wasn't quite right with Thunders. And on Indies, it's fixed that. I now have a nice broad range of manual adjustment. Let's see if we've addressed the manual problem. I'm here in the beautiful Slocan Valley and I am still riding my killing floor board after about a week and a half and I found an abandoned sawmill. Well, there's not much of a sawmill left, it's a whole bunch of asphalt and beautiful mountains all around. Okay, let's see what we have next over here. We have a large piece of concrete with some smooth spots. Let's see if we can find anything else to skate around here. Concrete. Lots of old sawdust. Flat gap with dangerous protrusions of metal all over the place. Hmm, flat gap? And we found this gap, which is crazy huge. It's like gotta be a foot and a half tall and four feet long. So, see if my 35 year old bones can jump down this thing. Okay, so after about five weeks on this board, I think I'm ready to get rid of it and try a new one. However, it's been a good board. It still hasn't mushed out. It still has a pretty good amount of pop and I've enjoyed riding it. The only thing I don't like about it, and this is kind of silly, but I wish it had a colored layer under there because as it starts to wear out, it just makes it look older faster. So that's my only actual complaint about this board. It kept its pop well. It was an enjoyable board to ride. It worked well on both Thunders and Indies. And if you're looking for a company that is skater owned, smaller, you know, you're a purist, you want a legit company. Well, I think Killing Floor still has that real street cred feel to use some horrible term. So. I've enjoyed this board. I don't think it would be a waste of money to go pick one up. You can check out their videos on YouTube. They got some good riders. And yeah, this company's out of Portland, keeping it weird. So if you're looking for a new board company to try, I don't think you're gonna be too disappointed with this. Anyways, that's my final opinion on killing floor boards. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, subscribe. If you didn't, whatever.
as long as I'm skating, I'm going to keep putting these out.